what is domestic domestic abuse also called domestic violence or intimate partner can be defined as a pattern of behavior in any relationship that is used to gain or maintain power and control over an intimate partner this is physical sexual emotional economic or psychological actions or threats of actions that influence another person. This includes any behaviors that frighten, intimidate, terrorize, manipulate, hurt, humiliate, blame, injure, or wound someone. Domestic abuse can occur within a range of relationships, including couples who are married, living together, or dating. If you haven't yet watched Choosing Celibacy again, go and watch that first because that'll pretty much catch you up to speed with this video. Many of you may not have seen um, in recent news the live streaming video that went viral between the baby and Danny Lay. She got pregnant by the baby. At her baby was three months. She was staying with him and he put her out with her child, called the police on her, and I believe she was ended up being arrested. And he pretty much made her look like she was crazy, she was delusional, and pretty much just embarrassed her, humiliated her uh, with all of his followers, made her look like she wasn't a fit mom, she didn't have all her stuff together, and was just saying that it was never, never in a relationship. She was just a side chick, basically. People shout it, it's cuckoo for Coco Pop. Shout it is cool, Coco Puff. And shout is not my girl. I ain't never been my girl. Is my side bitch. It's your what? No, my it's side bitch. Shout is a certified side bitch. I deserve so much better. I really do. So I hope God, please, I pray that this is the last situation. This is the last. When I saw that video, I wasn't even looking for it, but of course it was all over YouTube, you know, in the news and everywhere. Um, I was like, man, I was once that girl. I was once in her shoes. If you have never lived with a narcissist, had relationships with a narcissist, you probably wouldn't understand when you see one. But because I've been there, I instantly recognize those traits. They always want to play victim. It's never their fault. It's your fault. People use this word a lot. I don't know where it come about, but I've seen it a lot over the past the past year. But I remember before I even knew what this what a narcissist was, this video ended up popping up on my news feed and I clicked on it and I watched it. And for the first time ever I began to understand who the man was that I was living with. All the things that he did, I began to understand what that spirit was behind it, like what it was. Yeah, I'm praying for everyone who is just in a, just a, who's being abused. I don't want that for anyone. Mm -mm -mm. I don't want that. Yeah, I don't like that. And I don't like how people are like, tr like making fun, like don't make fun of people. Like don't do that. <clears throat> it's like you just you kick, kick someone when they're already, you know, down. Like it's just disgusting. Like it's just, can we just focus on the narcissism like that? This woman is going through, like, no, hell to the f no, disgusting. I don't like it. Yeah. I was just pr praying for healing and strength, because, oh my God. No. Ooh, Shaka, you. Mm. I'm speaking on some real It's just soulless to the core. Mm. Mm. Soulless.
to the core. Don't like it. Mm -mm. Mm. Mm -mm. Yeah, social media is a dark place. To see things like this and to be entertained, to find entertainment in it, to have no empathy. What type of demons are out here? Like, hell no. Nah. Hell no. Nah. It's just a place I don't want to be. It's a place I don't want to be. I don't want to see this shit. I don't because this is so, this is wrong. It's so wrong. It's wrong. No. Mm. Mm -mm. Mm. I told y'all in the last video that God saved my life from my child's father, my baby daddy whatever you want to call it. I met him on my on my last job, my previous job. I was working on the line and he worked in the back as a mechanic and he would always come by, you know, speak, ask me how I was doing. I didn't even know the man. I wasn't looking at him in that kind of way. I was just, you know, he was speaking. I was just being cordial. When I told him to stop talking to me, of course he asked why. And I told him he and he explained to me, you know, he told he was honest. He was like, he, he let me know what was up about that situation. So um, we end up just chit chatting a little bit um, on our break. He invited me to his car to talk and we end up exchanging numbers. And we from that day on, you know. He had my number and he began to text me. The very first conversation scared me so bad that I ended up leaving um, the restaurant because we were supposed to meet up at Waffle House. So he ended up asking me this crazy question. Like, I can't even sit here on, you know, on here. And I was like, wow, you know, he crazy. So I told him, I was like, hey, thank you for being interested in me. But I started back going to church. I'm trying to get my life back together. You know, I don't need this. Thank you, but no thank you. But then he ended up calling me. And this is what he said. I'm really just being. He said, don't judge no book by its cover. And I was like, okay, well, let me just listen. Let me just hear him out and see what he's, you know, what he got to say. Because he said, I just really want somebody to tell me the right thing to do. And I said, you don't need to do it. And he said, okay, I'm not. And, you know, the conversation went from there. And I was like, okay, he, he really ain't a bad person. He just misguided. So because I ghosted him on that first date, he was like, you know you owe me for a date, right? And I was like, yeah, I know. He ended up sending me his address to the apartment he stayed in. He um, let me know that he shared it with his sister. Remember this. <laughs> we ended up going to the cookout and coming back. So this was, I can say that this was the night that I actually like looked at him. And I was like, okay, you know, he's kind of cute. You know, they was in the process of packing because he was moving the sister to... Uh, apartment on another side of town something where that she couldn't afford for herself because he was like telling me that he was trying to find his own place so after that night a week later i ended up moving out of my parents house and i had nowhere to go i was pretty much living in my car showering in the gym and i was still going to church at this time y'all i remember sowing a seed God ended up giving me a word about a house, three bedroom, and one of the rooms would be an office for my business. And he was going to begin to speak speak to me. I just started shouting and running around the church because nobody knew my situation and what I was going through at that time. And faith without works is dead. So I got on my ground like looking for a house and I ran into a snag. My credit score was 730, but I had outstanding student loans. And that the income ratio, it was becoming an issue. And I had only talked to one person. I think I should have talked to more people, but I just, hearing that, I got discouraged. 
And I was like, Lord, I need a place to stay. I can't keep sleeping in my car. I can't keep, you know, showering at no gym. I need to find a place ASAP. So I ended up telling one of my coworkers about my situation. She was like, uh-uh, you can come up here with me, stay with me and my mom, you know, until you find you a place. So I say about two two and a, two or two and a half weeks, I stayed with her and her family, and she ended up telling my baby daddy about my situation because I hadn't even said anything to him at this time. You know, we still going to know one another. I'm just like, I don't want to let him know. But... Our second day, we went to see Lion King one day, and I had all my stuff in my car. Like, I had this little bitty board. It was like a titanium. And um, he was like, what are all your stuff doing? And I was like, oh, I'm just going to donate. He didn't believe me. He was just like, hmm, because I, I figured he already he knew what was up, but we didn't talk about it no more after that. So, you know, one day at work, at this time, he's trying to find him a place, too. He was like, well, I'm staying at a hotel tonight. I'm not staying with my sis. I'm staying at the hotel. And if you want to come, you can come. Well, I ended up taking him up on his offer, and I went. And that's what one of the things about him. He was doing it for me. He wasn't really doing it for himself. He was doing it so I can have a place to like lay down and stretch out. You already said they mistreated you and did you wrong. That's why I was in the hotel with your black. As y'all can see, in the beginning, he started off sweet. Eventually, I once I got the apartment, I asked him if he wanted to move in because he still hadn't found him a place. Not that he didn't have the money, but because he had a felony. So it was hard for him to find a place on his own. Uh, on his own. That's why he was staying with the sister. So I gotta tell y'all this important part right here. I ended up finding me an apartment in August of 2019. And rewind back to one of our last days in the hotel, he ended up getting a text. And I just remember him sitting up on the edge of the bed, he started talking to himself. And I'm like, what in the world? So I'm like, what's up, what's wrong with you? And he was like, I'm just getting a text from this girl talking about she pregnant something about a baby and i'm like a baby because i'm like i've asked you all these questions in the beginning like do you have any kids are you married because i want to know but and so i'm listening i'm like okay but is it your baby he had already told me about this girl that he had met at the time he already had a, a old lady and she wanted to have sex with him because you know, he had been helping her or something like that. And long story short, she ended up getting pregnant. And he said that he didn't see how it could be his because it was just pre -com. And I was like, pre -com? I don't know. I got to ask because I, I haven't been, I never been pregnant. I don't know anything by, you know, biology about stuff like this. Like pre -com or regular com. I don't know. So, I asked some friends. Some people said yes, some people said no. He, he said that they was even staying together, all three of them. Me not knowing that the old lady he spoke about was the sis. But I learned this. That they called her the Bosare there. I learned this later on after I had had my child. And me and the girl spoke, but let me not get too ahead of myself. So after everything, something just hit me. I was like, wait a minute. I remember asking him how long it had it been since he had sex. He told me a year. And when I started doing the math, I was like, well, how far along is she? I was like, wait a minute, six months. You told me you had had sex in a year because he told me he had been with her like in February. And here it was like, I believe it was, it was July at the time, 2019. And I was like, did he lie? You know, why would he lie about this like timing about having sex? 
only problem you had was, okay, when I last time I had sex, and I should have coded that because I don't believe that's my baby, and I don't. Okay, cool. All right. Wow. What do you do? That's before your time. That do with you. Even though I saw the red flag, I was still like intertwined, caught up with this man because let me tell y'all, he was good at his words, speaking and talking to the point where he'll make you like feel like you're wrong. Even when we, the first time at the hotel, like that first night when he gave me a place to stay that night, some things end up occurring about his name. And I was like, wait a minute, didn't you tell me your name was this, his last name? And he ended up explaining. And I was trying to be understanding. I was trying to not be judgmental. God had showed me. He will show you warning comes before destruction. And I just didn't take heed at the time. I didn't. So that was my fault. When I should have ran, when I did run, I should have stayed running and never looked back. So after we moved in together, we end up having an argument because I end up taking my keys to the house and I took the keys to my car. So he ended up coming out the bathroom and he went to grab his keys and he saw that the car key wasn't on there. And then he realized the door key wasn't on his keychain. And that really just pissed him off because he was just like, are you using me? And you is taking the key. That means you won't leave it gone. And I didn't. At the time me taking the key, I didn't think of it like that. I was just like upset. I was just tired of being left in the house by myself. He wasn't even a club person, but it was just like, since we had moved in, you know, we wasn't going to the hotel anymore. It was just, you know, and we working six days out of the week. In the afternoon, like all day, he out busting plays in my truck. At night, you going out with your friends, but you're not even inviting me. It's like... You know, what are we doing? Now, when we first started, I was sweet, kind, and all that. Because you ain't showed me that side you've been pulling now. You don't see it. Just like you don't see what you do. I know what I'm doing. I ain't doing a falling back when I see When I see foolishness, bro, I ain't got fuck going on. But you've been coming at me sideways since... A little minute ago. And that first thing you keep saying is, oh, I feel like you're trying to use me because of your situation. Bro, I have, I showed you, I got, if I got, if you see all that, bro, left. Where is that? All I brought was clothes here, bro. How many times I got to show you? I'm not doing that to hurt you, bro. I'm doing this to show you, bro. I don't want to use you. I'm here for you. Right? I done showed you so many different ways that I'm here for you. And the first thing you saying is because of how I treat you. How am I treating you? Oh, I don't talk to you like that. I don't spend time with you. I don't take you out. This is, these are the way I mean. Um, let me see. What else? Oh, we don't have sex. Um, what else? Um, let me see. Huh? Oh, I lie to everybody else. They lie to you. Lie to everybody else. Why I lie to you? Oh, so, so what I lie to you? And that's, that's where I was. I was just, just tired of that. So he ended up leaving that night. Um, he had his sister come pick him up. And he ended up moving out. Like he moved all his stuff. Because in reality, y'all, we did move a little too fast. From us meeting, us moving in, it was, it was too fast. So September comes, another month comes in, and, you know, I'm at the house by myself. I'm getting lonely, you know, I'm missing him. And it really, to me, it's just a misunderstanding. So we end up talking, and he was like, well, if we try again, it's nobody's business but ours. 
when September comes, I remember that's the month that I end up getting a truck. He was the main reason that I end up getting a truck because he always had kept telling me like, let's get something with more space and let's build together the out. That's something that he constantly repeated to me over and over again. The car salesman was telling me that I, they could put me in a 2019 for it because my credit score was so good. I ended up getting approved for the truck. I drove home with it and that night when we went to work and I picked him up, he was on the phone with his sis and he was like, she say it's her, her truck, but I think it's a rental. I'm like, what? So that was another thing with him and the sis, like, their relationship was just, it was weird to me at the time before I knew. And I would always ask him, because people were saying stuff on a job. They was like, they saying that they sister and bros, but they don't been together. Everybody would say that. I remember asking him. He would, And the thing that he told me, he told me this. If you seen how she look, you wouldn't ask me that. Trying to say that the girl was ugly. And y'all, I, I had never really seen how the girl looked because on our job, we was always dressed with PPE, dressed down in PPE, hats, glasses, masks, everything. So I didn't really see her and neither was I really like, like trying to look like that either. But I remember approaching her and woman to woman, I asked her, I was like, what is it between you and, you know? And she said, well, People been saying that for years, and it's up to you to believe what you want to believe. But that's my bro, and it's nothing. That's what she said to me. But I was just like, still kind of in the back of my mind, I was iffy about the whole thing because I knew she would get jealous of us being together. Like, nights when we was at the hotel, she will be texting him, calling. So one night, me and him had gone to an argument. He was at the house, and... He ended up leaving like 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning saying that he was about to go over to the sis and play the game. This is a, I was like, it's 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. You talking about you about to go to your sis house and play the game? Really? So, he ended up coming back. She brought him back and she ended up calling. She was like, ha ha ha, I won. And he was like, yeah. So I was like, I'm trying to still figure out. Because I was like, either she don't care what this man doing, that he he's with someone else, he's having sex with someone else, and she just stupid. Like, because I'm, at the time, I don't have no clue. I'm just trying to figure it out. Like, tell me the truth, be real. So October gets here, and he end up, well, at this time, it's we're not really talking like that. Um, I think we had had a falling out about something. It's probably something either something with the job or something with the sis. I'm pretty much like over it. And we had a trip planned um, that month, that month before we had a fallout that he had already paid for. So I remember being in the parking lot on the job and he came and knocked on my window. And I rolled down the window. I was like, you know, what's up? Because I'm shocked that he even came my way. Because we, at this time, we're not even, like, talking. So he asked me a question. He was like, you still want to go with me to Florida? Because his brother was getting out of prison. And it was going to be something like a, a celebration for him. And also, like, a family reunion. Because they hadn't seen one another. You know, the family and all this stuff. I asked him a question. I was like, are you going to add brand new? Like, don't get me up there with your family and show out and try to embarrass me. And he started laughing. He was like, no. Nah. He was like, let me know. Let me know some. So I decided to go because um, I was born in Florida, but I never really had been back home like that as far as like being able to get out and sightsee. So it was something that I wanted to do. And he knew that because... Before the fallout between him and I, I told him that we get there. I meet his mom, his dad, all his siblings, everybody. Nieces, nephews, everybody. And 
lo and behold, he gets me up there. He well, he gets me down there to Florida and he shows out on me, y'all, the entire time up until the last day. He was the type of person that liked to flex. For whatever reason, he wanted to make always make things seem like it was more than what it was, that he had more than what he had. So when we get there, you know, everybody want to go out that night. Once again, he wants to leave me at the house by myself in another state with people that I don't even know. And he wants to drive my truck doing it. And I said, no, I was like, you don't even know where you're going. And how are you going to just use my truck and not even take me? Like, are you for real? Come on now. So that night they went out and guess what? They got lost. They didn't even know where they was going. And when he got, he got back early. So I was like, what happened? Did y'all even go out? He was like, yeah, we got lost. I said, mm, see, but you want to ride around in my truck? Yeah, you from Florida, but y'all don't know nothing about this side of town because we was in Deerfield. And I think later on that, that week we ended up going to Universal Studios. So they didn't know nothing about that place, y'all. But you want to ride around in my new truck? No, sir. And y'all have to realize this, too. From all the stories he had told me, because he opened up to me a lot about his family, about his childhood. On that trip, I began to see everything that he was saying about the family being dysfunctional. He had animosity towards his mom, but he really had animosity towards his dad, too. But he had animosity towards both of them because, you know, his mom abandoned him as a child. He was raised by his grandmother. Wait, my mom had nine kids. I was a foster child. I was beaten and abused. Um, so his upbringing was rough and I was trying to be understanding of that as well. Like the reason for a lot of his actions and the things that, but it, it was no excuse, but he ended up apologizing. So the last night of our vacation, we end up having sex. And that's the night that I conceived Abijah. We both knew this, y'all. It was no surprise. And during intercourse, he just ended up falling over. And I was like, what's wrong? He was just like, I didn't feel a uh, release. It just shot out. I didn't feel it. He just shout out. And so I'm just like, where did it go? And he never said nothing. He was just quiet the whole night. He just laid down in the fetal position and went to sleep. And so did I. And the next day, um, we was on our way back to Georgia. I was driving. He was in the passenger seat. And I asked him, I said, you know, let's have this conversation. Where did it go? And he was like, he went in you. And I was just like, really? Because at this time, y'all, this is October. And he has told me about the baby mama that she's saying that she having his baby. No, he was still denying the baby. Like, he was saying it's not his. Uh, I don't believe that's my baby. And I my the window of me having a child it was open because my period had just went off and he knew that so um when we get back to georgia he ended up calling me one night like before we had to go to work he was like come pick me up come pick me up and i first had to stop by and pick up someone else that because we all you know all three of us would try to, to work together like um i was picking up the girl who I went to church with, brother, he was like, oh, nah, I told you to come pick me up then. You should have came pick me up. And when I got there, it was like police is outside. It was two cops and the sister. And um, they was like standing outside arguing. And I didn't know what was going on. The next day, he told me that 
his sister had got into it with um, one of his customers and she threw a brick in the car windshield. So from that night on, he was with me. He no longer returned back um, over there to stay with his sister. I think he wanted to just lay low for a minute because it was hot, you know, with the cops. And the girl who ended up busting the window shield was someone that he called brother's girlfriend. So he laid low for, I say, probably about a few days. It wasn't too long. But when he was at the apartment, the sister, she ended up calling him one day. She was like, I moved. And he was like, you moved? What you do with all the stuff? Most of all of his belongings outside of the TVs, um, she gave to Goodwill. And in her doing that, she didn't know, but some the movers had took his wallet. Like, the wallet that had his whole stash in there and his social security card and his real license. I remember him telling me one day, he was like, he asked her, they was arguing. And he asked her, he was like, you must want me or something. And I was like, what did she say? Because I, I had been telling him that for the longest, like I had been saying that people on the job had been saying this. And I'm like, what? Because I'm like, she may have once looked at you like a bro, like a filial type of love. But I'm sensing that this girl like wants you. And this was a problem with us, like, this would cause a drift between us, between the sister and then the females on the job wanting this man for whatever reason, like that they thought that he just had it like that. But I knew what was up. Like, I saw this man in tears the day that we left um, from Florida because he was like his family had stole from him. But he ended up giving them his debit card thinking that he wasn't, they wasn't gonna spend so much money, but they spent the whole thing. Like, and he was crying in that car on our way back to Florida, like talking about, you know, he just out here surviving, he ain't got it like that. Even in his little, he would help a lot of people. Um, Like even one friend, he was paying for her tuition. So that's what I didn't really get about him. Like people that, wasn't really family or that he that he or that he he didn't even know that well. But when it came down to a possibility of him being a father, he didn't really meet the needs. Black folks I take care of and none of y'all get reason why I'm standing out here free this day is because I bless everybody. And you see that. Every day I bless everybody with knowledge, love, and money. Every fucking day, what I get in return. What do you see I get in return? Not a thing but my money back. That's, that's something that I just do not play about a man not taking care of his kids. We get back to Georgia and... I'm sleeping a lot, so he asked me, he was like, you sure sleeping a lot, you must be pregnant. I ended up having a dream. God showed me in a dream this baby. And when I woke up, I told him about the dream. I was like, I just dreamed about a little boy. And I told him what happened to him. And he's just like, mm -mm, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to talk about it. He wanted to be out here having sex, but he didn't want to take care of responsibility that came with it. Yeah, you seen a dream about a baby, but this ain't the time. And that's why I'm not. I'm not gonna. I ain't got nothing to do with it. I said your decision is on you. Because if you was to have support, I'll pay for the whole thing if you wanted me to. No problem. No questions asked. You can pay the bills still and take care of yourself. You keep it. You focus on yourself. I don't know how you're going to do that. Like I said, I'll support you still. I'm still here for you. I still care for you. Enough to make sure you scrape. It's 
still gonna make sure even if I leave, like I do for my sister, I will do for you. Make sure you straight. Once you get on your feet, pay them back, get right, do you. Right? That's the good way. Bad way. I really can't well, I really can't say a bad way on that because you still gonna have your job. You can go to work the next day. Have a little pains. It's going to be like you have a period for a couple of days. And you'll be alright. You're going to be paying for that day. And they're going to be you paying for pills for it. I already know a whole operation. So we never done that. Twenty times. Anyways. <sighs> um, he ended up having to come stay with me. Like, because the sis, the sis moved. And y'all, she ended up moving up the street from me. Like, houses down. She ended up moving in with her friend and her friend's boyfriend. So I stayed in the singles and they stayed in the family, on the family side. She's from the move over here with Gay Hill. And that's on her. Yeah. I'm not moving with her. She ain't moving with her. She ain't moving with her. I'm ready to talk to some people about some trailers. I'm waiting on and I was like, wow, this is crazy. So at this point, y'all, I'm pregnant. I end up finding out that I was pregnant on November the 12th. And because I was initially going for an ultra, a ultrasound that day anyway to see how big my fibroids were, which it was, it was really a confirmation that I was early pregnant. He really had started to begin to show who he really was like always talking about the devil him being the devil's son i play like i'm insane and crazy bro because i've been there done that i seen it god done showed me i believe in god 100 all that devil shit, bro you know i'm flaking now i'm going to church for if that's the case even though the devil can go into church but he can't touch the bible he can recite though <laughs> Oh, you ain't know that is. Yes. Mm. Okay. Well, good to know. Just know, I know, and I've been there and done that. Trying to give you a fair warning because I seen it. I dream about it every day about just life, living, people I care about, running to their domination every day. This is why I wake up with spirits and be angry all the time. Because I've seen it before it happened. Saw you and plenty of them butchers. I just never told you because I want to see if it's going to come true. You don't tell nobody it comes true. I've done that. I hate that I break me, bro. When I break down, bro, me, bro, to see my black folks do this stupid. That cycle, bro. Let's get it, bro. Let's get money and build, bro. You don't even want to. What you talking Man, about? Man, what is you talking about? You don't know me, bro. You ain't giving a nigga a chance. Every time you put up a wall and want to do bro. Every time we got take a step forward, you take two steps back. And I don't, so you don't, don't never see it. No, it's not about a baby, bro. Since day one, you've been pulling two steps back and I've been trying to sit in and build, bro. I'm not trying to blame you for everything, but what's going on. But really, it is your fault, fool. I'm not your daddy. I'm supposed to be your lover, but you're it up. I end up finding out that I was the girl that he got pregnant was 19 years old. Like, he was 32, she was 19. And so, her folks was trying to get him on child support. If you don't get this, if you don't do this and find a house for you, for her, you and this baby, we're going to force child support. So, y'all... Yeah. It was crazy. I never would have thought that I would have been caught up in a situation like that. I'm like, Lord, how did I get here?
like how did I go from being going to start getting back into church and getting the word and you speaking to me you know to me being pregnant going through something like this so he wanted to stop having sex and I was like cool you know at first I it was a you know I was like you know what he got going on because how he was uh, how he used to love to have sex I was like for him to stop having sex that's just abnormal for him but I was just like, okay, God, you know, whatever you protect me from, it's okay. I'll, I'm going to be all right. So, he started getting more and more, like, saying crazy off the wall stuff or him killing the baby. Um, thinking of ways how he was going to do it, push her down the stairs or... Once she had the baby, go get the baby and have a car accident. And I'm tired of being a good nigga. I want to be the f***ing to be in. I Three on. I Intentionally. Understand that. So, the girl ended up having her baby in November. He did go get, like, a, a stroller for the girl because I think she was asking him for a stroller. But he never gave it to her. Like, for a whole month, y'all, I drove around with that girl's stroller in my, in my trunk. And I would ask him, I was like, are you going to go, if you, are you going to give it to her? And... He was just like, she don't want it. She ended up buying one on her own. So when she had her baby, I gave him the keys to go, to be able to go see the baby. Because I was just like, like I said before, I've never been a type to keep a man from his kids. If I would have known he, he was doing her like that, like that he had abandoned her. But he really just tried to make it seem as though she was just trying to pin a baby on him. But he really abandoned her. Man, so much stuff I found out when they was living together. The sis knew that it was his baby and she was taking her to doctor's appointments. I was like, what woman is okay with this? What woman is okay with? <sighs> oh, Jesus. So as he was, you know, he had began to talk crazy and all this stuff. He ended up getting a gun. Like before he was telling me, I had never seen him with a gun. But I remember him like bringing up the topic of trying to find one. I was like, what are you trying to find a gun for? He's not even legally allowed to have a gun, have a weapon. So the December comes and the sister is, she has officially moved down the street from me in the same apartment complex. And he has forgiven her for, you know, getting rid of all his stuff. And he has going to stay with her, the friend, and the friend's boyfriend. Um, and so, I tell him one day, I was just like, come get your stuff. Um, because you're not going to use my place as a storage. You're not even trying to... Make sure I'm good. Go to no doctor's appointments with me or anything. Because before he moved out, I had a doctor's appointment. And I asked him, I was like, are you going to go? And he he told me no, he wasn't going to go. But that same day, he ended up going with the sister to, like, to get her teeth looked checked or something like that. Because um, she told him that they were going to drug her. So she was like, my sister need me. Mind you, this not even this man, biological sister. You have blood children in this world that you, you can call family, but you're denying them or, you know, don't want to take on the responsibility of being their father. He, um, like off the bat, started denying my child, saying that my son wasn't his, though he knew he had got me pregnant. You wanted to have sex. Oh, no, I didn't want to have sex. 
that night I wanted to have sex the day before. You didn't want to have sex, so it's really your fault. Okay, you're going to have this child. You're so stupid. I can't wait to see this. Like, he couldn't wait to see. Like, he really was praying for my downfall, wanting to see me fall on my face, carrying his child. So he ended up texting me one day saying that he had to come and get the rest of his stuff. And I was like, you got everything. You know, what did you leave? So me thinking he had like another hidden stash somewhere with his money. Because he would leave like a stash of money in a drawer. But this time he came, it was kind of like he, had his, he kept his hand in his pocket as if he had a gun. Like, like he was coming to harm me that's what I felt so I was like I you know I stayed calm I was like you didn't leave nothing you took everything everything is gone and he was just like hmm so he ended up leaving I end up having this feeling like to like pray through my home so I end up calling up an old friend and she came to pray with me when she prayed she ended up giving me a word. She was like, be careful when you come home. Because I, I forgot to tell y'all this part. So, I'm working a new job. And I was, when I was working morning shift. And they end up switching my shift to nighttime. So, at this point, I'm coming home late. And she was like, be careful when you coming home. Because I see him watching you. And I'm like, okay. I remember him saying... He be stalking now, but he know how to control himself. But I always listen. I had started to listen to the enemy and the things that he would say, you know. Because one thing about the enemy, he going to tell you his next move. He think he's sly, but mm -mm. And she was like, I see a female. I see, this, I see this girl with him. And I said, oh, that's the sister. She was like, yeah, she dressing him. She was like, yeah, she got witchcraft on him, but it wasn't far-fetched, like, because the day that he came back with his hand in his pocket, when I looked down, he had on, like, this, these new pair of jogging pants with the tag hanging out. So, I was like, okay, you know, I could pretty much see why he, he, he it was like he never could leave her. And why she would get jealous, you know, of him being around different females outside of her if you just consider him to be your brother. With all this news that had hit me at once, I still wanted him to be there for that girl and that baby. Like, it gave me hope that he would at least be there for mine, but he wasn't. Before he left the house, he told me, he was like, it used to be all about you. He was like, but now that you're pregnant, it's all about the baby now. So when he left, he, it wasn't like we was, we left in an argument. Giving up your when you already got it. You ain't had to pay. What are you talking about? Yes, I do. What you going to pay for? Rent. I ain't talking about that. What are you talking about then? Don't worry about it. You just don't understand. You ain't had to. You ain't had to. I know if you need some help, my nigga, a nigga gonna help. About the baby? No, it ain't about the baby. I'm talking about this hill. How long have I been talking about this hill? How long have I been telling you to get this right? How long have I been telling you to get this right? I'm not worried about that, bro. I'm going to be there for that if I got to. Why? Because I'm a father. We was kind of like, I remember him saying this. He was like, by the time you have the baby, I'll either be dead or in jail. So our last little text in December, I didn't see him leaving. I didn't see him anymore for months. When he left and we prayed through the, prayed through the house, I just got before God and I just worshiped. And I remember him telling me to move. I packed up my bags. I didn't ask no questions. He said, move. I moved, and he told me where to go. I ended up calling the girl that I was going to church with. 
And when I called her, she already knew I was calling her. I could tell by the way she answered the phone. She was like, yeah, you can come. And y'all, I was still in the same time. Some of y'all, God had a covering over me. I never ran into him. He never saw me in any of that, that whole time that I was there. When March came around, I had I was scheduled for another ultrasound. And this is when I found out I was carrying a boy. God had showed him in a dream that he was having a son. Yeah, I seen my dreams about this. I knew your fuck ass was praying. Knew this. You would have think thought that that would would have helped change him because he kept telling me he wanted to break generational curses. He didn't want to be like his dad, but I was like, you break it by stepping up and being a father. So when I got the news, I was reluctant about sending it to him, but I did it anyway. I was like, wow, God, this is why you told me to move. He was trying to, God, like he was threatening my life. And God, y'all, that just took me to a place. I was like, it's one thing to be mad at me for whatever reason, but to take it out on the innocent baby, you telling me you're going to kill my child? Really? After you was just staying with me? After I helped you just like you helped me? Like, what are you saying? It hurt me so bad, y'all. I ended up going to the job and waiting for him. Waiting for him to show up. Because I was going to face him. I was just like, I dare you. I dare this demon to try to put fear in me. To try to control me. And think that I'm just going to just take it. No, I y'all, I had just reached a point where I was just like, no more. So you trying to Why is you here? Asking you a question. I ain't friendly with you. I'm about to get me for. Well, Don't get what you're looking for. I'm about to get me. What you here for, fool? Yeah. Your problem is, so you give me? me my money. So you threatening me? Do you have my money? Don't you have a baby on Do you have my Don't money? Do you have my money? No. I and so what are you here for? That? Why are you I'm here for? To to okay, that. I ain't worrying about that, cool. Like I said, you ain't gonna get my money. I don't give a fuck what don't you, you have another baby curse? I don't got nothing. Like I said, you spent money on. I, I got test proof that. You ain't worrying about that. Where's my money? Where's my money? Where's my Where's my money? money? Do you have my money? What money? So, what is you here for? You think I'm playing with you? You think I'm playing with you? Because you and your sister are gonna be involved fuck. in all this. Ain't nobody going to be involved. She oh, ain't no. got nothing to do with this. Because you know what he have done. And he threatening me and my baby. And a baby on the way. So that's how you feel? And that's how you feel? That's how As a woman that's been trying to get pregnant? Who? Who? That ain't that shit. What you told me? What that got to do with her? Me and you ain't got. Keep on messing with him. Do you know I know, know I mess with him? So what the hell are you talking about? What are you talking about? Why are What's you your name in? What's your name? What's your name? What's your full name? What's your full name? What's your full name? I got you. Charnel, I got you. Charnel. I got you, Charnel. Yeah. I got right. Texas videos, anything. You throw okay. me. Get away from my car. Get away from my car. Okay. Get away from my car. I don't care because you feel okay. me. Get away from my car. I told you to pay my money. Get away from my car, bro. Okay. Don't about your business. And that's all I want. I don't want you no know, feel. Okay. Thank you for saying it. Thank you for saying it. I thought it was so sad to see his sister, a woman, take his side, knowing that I was pregnant and him pulling out a gun on me. And when I look back, I end up seeing this other guy that he called his brother, the same person that I let sleep on my sofa, like for him to rest 
I looked up and he was shaking his head at me. And I was like, wow, God. Wow. <sighs> Here you have a person where y'all could say something, but y'all choose to just go along and get along. I didn't understand why he would even want to be around people like that that couldn't tell him the truth about himself. Like, <sighs> So I ended up leaving. After that situation, I called the cops. And I remember checking on the case. And they had a warrant for his arrest, but they hadn't arrested him. Y'all, a month after he did that to me, he ended up shooting his ex. Um, I ended up getting a call from one of my previous co-workers. You know, the same person that I worked on the line, on the line with, the homegirl. And she was like, did you see the news? Did you read the article? And I was like, no, I think she's talking about my case. She was like, no, nah, girl, he shot his ex. And I'm like, what? And right after that, I ended up getting a call from my victim, my victim advocate. And y'all, uh, I've been going to court ever since then. So what I lied to you about? They just, like, when we was in Tacos and Moors, I was just like, where well, you got your stuff at? You was like, oh, in my homegirl house. Said she used to but now she back with a man. Mm -hmm. Then yesterday is my ex house. I hear that because right. This what you do all the yeah, time. Yeah, I hear that. I hear that. No, actually, I, I hear that. But she, everything I said was true. But it's my ex. I never said that. I just never told you the whole thing. Right. But, that's, but anyways, that's what it's been like the whole time, though. You don't never tell the whole thing. But it's not. Yo, business. That's a lie. Hi, we together. But you say you want to be or you been into a Okay, war. okay. Therefore, Stop. you get there. You get there. I don't tell you everything off rip, nigga. You ain't telling me everything off rip. What the fuck you mean? Yes, I do. Man, come on, bro. I don't yeah, you nothing. Okay, and I don't. And the only thing I'm saying is, okay, it'll feel so. You'll probably feel some type of way. So I didn't want to no, hurt no, your really. feelings or none of that. I said, okay, I dropped it off over there, but I ain't at the X part. I'm like, a whole nigga, no. If I say I'm going to see my ex, just like I told a lot of people, if I go see my ex, just to go sit. Like, bro, why the fuck you going over there, bro? Like, he did to me, bro. Everybody want to me, bro. Like, anything I tell a nigga, a nigga don't go, bro. But this is an example that I'm telling you that you do all the time. Okay, I high is stuff. not a lie. Yes, it is. No, it's not because of the fact that I don't feel like I want to hurt nobody's feelings or I don't want nobody to feel like they should get their feelings involved with something that ain't nothing going on. Just like I told you about how these motherfuckers be acting, the first thing came to you was supposed to be around me, right? And you started acting funny and started talking shit. Nigga, I had to smoke in front of you and sit there and tell you, come here. Why is you tripping by her? We just smoking. Right? In the parking lot, right? Mm -hmm. Where is all I prove shit to you. I don't lie to you. I hide because I don't feel like I want you to get in your feelings about it. That's just how I feel because if I was a female, I'll get in my feelings, you see your ex. If you talking to your ass, I gotta, I'm getting my feelings. If we together on that level. Even if I'm a man. You talking to your ass, I got a problem. Understand? That's why I hit it. Because I feel like I have a problem. Only reason why I deal with her because I was still saying to her. Whatever she got going on, so she got going on. I just had, hey, bro. You know, you fuck me. Yeah, but I, I just need to spot the shit. Don't let that f I see even that nigga missing. And I know what I put here. I checked it in and all that. Him, I'm busting your ass too. You keep saying we're not together right You, We were never together. Why would you withhold information about where you're going to take your clothes? That's October is the month of the mission. I wanted to post this video then, but I didn't get around to it. But I really feel like now is... The perfect time because I end up seeing Charlotte. Charlotte Walker is 
her video ended up popping up in my news feed. And I watched her tell her truth. And I was so touched and moved. I was like, wow, God. It's so many women going through the message, the same thing that I went through. And I just want someone to know that you're not alone. We all live and learn. You know, we all make mistakes. But one thing I can say, God has never abandoned no woman. Check his record now. He has always been there for the widows, for even the married women who was abandoned. Um, he was there in the beginning. Sarah and her concubine, when she was in the wilderness, he made a way for her in a desert place, y'all. He provided for her son. And I want to tell you that he will provide for you too. No matter how that child came about, that child is a blessing. God gives life. The enemy doesn't give life. God creates life. You may feel like you lost because I had felt that way. I felt like, Lord, I was on the right track in the beginning and I allowed a man to deter me from you um, once again. But I can say that God is a redeemer. He is a present help. And I've just made it my business to not get distracted, to stay on the straight and narrow. Uh, I don't let no man come before my child. He hasn't even seen me with anyone. Even when I had my own place, I never had men in my apartment um, around him. We have to be careful as women about that as well. Who we let in our lives. Because it's so important, y'all. My baby daddy was very suicidal. And I remember having to get prayed over. And the spirit of suicide come off of me. <laughs> it's going to make it worse. You might want to your shoulders when you're done with it. Trust me. Been there, done that. You guys have to realize, even if you are wearing protection, you may not have had a child. Sexual transmitted demons are still possible, even with wearing a condom, y'all. STDs, sexually transmitted diseases, you either going to catch something that you can't throw back, or you're going to have an unplanned pregnancy. Like, those are the repercussions that we face when we don't wait on God. You're a good person. You're a beautiful young lady. You have a whole life you got to build ahead of you. But it's up to you what you're going to do with it. How you going to fix it? You can always do either. Or all you have to do is make the choice. But you have to figure out what you really want. What do you really want? And find it in your heart and make it go happen. I'm done. I, I, had to say, I said what I had to say. And I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings. Or if I hit, you know what I mean? I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. I'm just letting you know. I got you. What you doing? You got you to gotta just focus on your chest. Out. Figure out what you really want. Get me a boy. I'm raising a son. I'm raising man, 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 man. God gave me a boy. I'm raising a son. I'm raising a man, 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 man. God gave me a boy. I'm raising a son. I'm raising a man, 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 man. I feel bad for the people who didn't commit to you. I want to say it another way. I feel bad for the people who didn't think you were worth committing to. Because the ones who threw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fire were the ones who got consumed by the flames. I pray God send you somebody who sees that you are worth
forsaking all others for. I pray that God will bring somebody into your life who will not think it is an inconvenience to be held accountable. I pray that God will only assign people into your space who can see you in your future.